Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we are talking about some of the biggest interior design trends of 2023. And I'm gonna let you be the judge and you can tell me whether they are tacky or timeless. I'll of course share my opinion, but that's not the point. So the first thing we are talking about, one of the most overwhelming trends of 2023 is actually Danish modern. This is a style I personally really like and I think it actually looks really fantastic. Often mistaken for mid-century modern, this style has an emphasis on great quality materials with minimal design. Now, just because I said minimal design doesn't mean that quality, the build, the construction, or the details are minimal, we're just looking at things that are a little bit more refined and subtle. Now, Danish design has a lot of teak featured teak wood used in its construction, which I think is beautiful. And you often see a lot of organic upholstery materials like wool, mohair, cotton, and often leather, which is also really wonderful. But that does mean the style often has a more masculine feel to it, which can be good or bad. Now, I think what's really wonderful is that depending on the accessorizing you bring into this style can determine the overall feeling of it. And you can have something that feels very eclectic and modern if you infuse, you know, some atomic mid-century in with this, or if you opt for more textural and neutral tones, you do get a space that feels very interesting, curated, but a little bit darker and moodier. Danish modern, actually applies really beautifully to commercial construction. And you see a lot of architectural spaces that are very, very interesting and beautifully photographed in this style. I personally really like Danish modern. And if I ever had a second home, which, you know, maybe stay tuned for that, this is what I would probably lean towards because I really like a lot of the materials. You see teak and rosewood, leather, like I said, I just really gravitate towards those. So I think it's a great style and layers in really beautifully with other mid-century pieces and modernism pieces. So this is a good style to be on the lookout for. Danish modern is really interesting and I think you're going to see so much more of it, especially through some of these more curated furniture retailers that specialize in vintage. Danish modern taking over Often the pieces are also signed by the maker or artisans that craft them. That can be great if you're into collecting furniture pieces. So I think that's really wonderful. Danish modern, a style I personally really like, I think is timeless because I think it's very versatile and I think a lot of people already like this style, which is really wonderful. What do you think of it? Share with us in the comment section down below. Is it tacky or is it timeless? Something I've actually talked about before and we're bringing up again, that's a trend in 2023, is what everyone is calling warm minimalism. And the reason I'm putting air quotes on that is because it's not a thing. So I think this falls into the category of me thinking it's tacky because I think it's really just a talking point for the sake of it. Warm minimalism or what people are calling warm minimalism is essentially just organic modern without all of the vessel collections. And that's okay, I think that's great. You know, the thing is, warm is a feeling and minimalism is a lifestyle. Neither one of those are indicative of a specific style. I think you can be a minimalist and have a traditional style. I think minimalism can be ultra contemporary or Danish modern like we just talked about. You can have any style that is minimalistic and something can be minimalistic in design without being minimalism. So this whole warm minimalism thing doesn't really add up or make sense to me personally. I think, you know, steer clear of just finding a label like that and throwing it onto a style. Or if you have a really curated selection of unique and interesting things and you say, well, you know, I'm a minimalist and I like to have only a specific number of things and my focus is on things that are just warm in tone or feeling, maybe then you're a warm minimalist. But warm minimalism is not a specific style in my opinion. It is a trend that I think people are trying to make something, but since neither one of those are indicative of a specific style, I don't get it. Just for me personally, I guess, if you like warm minimalism or these styles, look for what references are being made. A lot of it is postmodern. A lot of it is mid-century. These are, are great styles and I like them. A lot of it is actually just like desert modern that people are calling warm minimalism. It's so it's, it's interesting to me. I like to see the images from it because I think a lot of this is great design, but warm minimalism it is not. A lot of these are just eclectic design styles that people are trying to branch off and make all of these different categories for. And I think it's okay not to put a label on your style at all. I think that's great. You know, my style, 
My style, I can pull a bunch of names out of a hat. Like I have a postmodern sofa, but I have an empire style table here. I have a Chippendale style desk. It doesn't matter because none of those are my specific style. My style is just me. It's Garrett. It's Le Chic. <laughs> it is whatever I want it to be today or tomorrow or whatever, but I don't have to necessarily put a specific label on it. And I don't think you have to either. I think it's all about embracing what you like and bringing that into your home and looking for things that work together, of course, but that doesn't mean they have to be one specific style overall in your home. So don't be afraid not to label your style just because like warm minimalism is in. If you like warm feeling spaces and you like minimalism, then you're a warm minimalist. And I think that's fantastic and beautiful for you. You could be a warm maximalist too, and that's okay. I mean, you know, I think that's great. Also, you could be a, I don't know, a warm traditionalist. That it does, You see, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense, which is why I don't think it's a specific style. Now, I'm not saying if you have warm minimalism and you're labeling your style as that, it's not good, because I think it is. I think it's beautiful. I just don't get the term warm minimalism. That doesn't make sense to me. Okay. I've triggered myself enough over this. And to calm down, we're gonna invite one of the pups up here. We're gonna call in Linus, Lionel, little baby lion. <laughs> what are you doing back there? Hmm? Are you being held like a little baby? Is that what you're doing right now? Are you surveying the land? Are you not used to being this high? Hmm? 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's very sleepy. What are you tired of? What are you tired of? You're tired of everybody watching and not subscribing? Such a good point. Everyone should take a moment and hit that subscribe button, become a part of the Le Chic family, and give this video a like. Isn't that right, Linus? Isn't that right? Isn't that right, Linus? Isn't that right? Yes. Mm. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Oh, we'll see you later. Back to the video. <laughs> okay, let's get the dog hair off and talk about the next style. I think I just referenced a maximalist style, and that's the next one we have to talk about, what I'm calling pop maximalist. And the reason I'm calling it pop maximalist is because a lot of this is postmodern design, but it's maximalism because there's just so much of it, it kind of covers everything. I think it's fun. I think it looks good. I actually like to follow the influencers who have this style because I think it's just really fun and they actually have a really great take on their content, and I think that's interesting. Pop maximalism, would I bring it into my home? Not necessarily. And I'm calling it pop because a lot of it is postmodern, but like postmodern at its core. Really colorful, unique, interesting shapes, unique takes on uh, ideas or pieces. I think I saw someone unbox a vase that is shaped like a foot. How interesting is that? Not for my home, but I think it looked really beautiful in theirs. This can be very fun to bring into a home, but it is something you could get tired of very quickly. So I think it is definitely something that has a youthful energy to it. I think it's great and fun. I think if this is your style, definitely go for it. It actually applies really well to rental spaces because a lot of this is just in having a ton of decor. That's kind of what maximalism can be. You can take it down that traditional route where it's a lot of like wallpaper and pattern and texture and having a lot of furniture and a lot of art on the walls, or you can take it to this place where it's just about having a lot of things with a lot of great design and a lot of features. So I think that's beautiful too. Pop maximalism, very fun, very colorful. Uh, you know, like I said, it has a very youthful, vibrant energy to it, which I think is really fun. I think we're seeing a lot of it in 2023. And I think that's great. I, you know, I love when people challenge my perspective and bring something interesting, unique to the design sphere. And I think this is that thing. Do I think it's timeless? Do I think it's tacky? I think it just depends on the person. I think some of the things are definitely tacky, but some of it is actually really cool, interesting, and timeless. And I'm looking at like, hey, I like that, you know? It's not maybe something I would bring into my home personally. And actually, I guess I do have a little bit of this through some of the pieces of art in my home that are really vibrant and colorful. So I think, hey, maybe I'm a pop maximalist at heart. I, well, probably not, but I think it's fun. I think it's a great style. Do I think it will be timeless for everyone forever? No, absolutely not. I think it is very trendy, but I don't necessarily know that I would say it's tacky because I think it actually looks pretty good. It's just not something I personally am going to do in my home. Let me know what you think of it though, because I think it's fun. Do you think it's fun? Do you think it's timeless? Sure. <laughs> now, if you follow any sort of fashion, anything on social media, whether that is, you know, fashion content creators, influencers, style icons or whatever, you will be familiar with the term 
quiet luxury. Quiet luxury is all about beautiful quality materials, great design, and it doesn't necessarily have to mean it's recognizable design. Here's a perfect example in my home. I have a Soriana sofa. If you're familiar with modern interior design, you recognize this piece. I think it's beautiful, I love it, I had it custom upholstered in a great color that fits my style. But the console table behind it actually was significantly more expensive, more than double the cost. However, that piece I've gotten comments on, people saying, oh, it looks cheap, it looks like I got it from my grandmother, even though it's much, much more expensive than the sofa itself that's easily recognizable. That piece of furniture is more quiet luxury than the sofa because you don't necessarily know where it's from, who it's by, or how much it cost. Now, if you're familiar with high quality, beautiful furniture, you recognize that it is an expensive piece. However, it's not something that you can specifically say, that's that piece from this collection, you got it from here and you paid this much for it. That is what quiet luxury is all about and something I personally really enjoy. So if you see something that is really great design and you think it's beautiful, but it's really expensive, don't be afraid to go out there and look for something similar that has those similar features, whether that's the wood tone, the upholstery, or the overall style. Not everything has to be expensive. You can mix high and low, or everything can be high end, but the point is, it shouldn't be something that is just expensive so you can show everyone that you bought something expensive. It needs to be beautiful design, you need to love it, and that doesn't have to mean the price is outrageous or staggering. You can get something that's great quality, that's an antique, that's collectible, that has a significant value to it, it without sharing that to everybody. I think this is something really great and it's something I'd like to see. It keeps us all from having the same pieces in our house and all gravitating towards the same thing. And I think that's fantastic. If you have a specific style that you really love and you are going to have that forever, it's okay to put some money into a more expensive piece just be sure you're not making sure everybody knows that you're not buying that piece just so that it looks expensive. I think this is a trend that's really great. You know, I love to mix different styles, different pieces together, and I think that's really wonderful. It's something I think is great. I do think it kind of gets into the sphere of being a little bit tacky when people talk about it because they're like, oh, it's that old money aesthetic, which that's kind of tacky. If you have to tell people it's old money, it's probably not. So I think steer clear of that, but quiet luxury is something really beautiful look for great quality materials, beautiful fabrics, and really detailed pieces of furniture that involve, you know, inlaid woods and beautiful craftsmanship. That's quiet luxury and I think that's fantastic. Quiet luxury is fun and everything, but what I'm also seeing a lot of in terms of online, on social media, is actually modern cottage. Now, cottage core is definitely a thing and it's very much like gets put into this like granny style, which I don't I don't really like to say that. I think that's a little bit not cool, but I like modern cottage because you have a lot of those classic references and you have modern takes on things that do look a little dated in the space. Like you may have floral curtains in cottage core that looks a little bit out of date. You can take that reference and apply it to Modern Cottage in a more interesting way or a more minimal way at that. You could use it for drapes also. You could use it for a Roman blind. Maybe you take and do pillows in that same fabric. That has a little bit more of that modern feel to it. It's a little bit more simple and that's okay. But Modern Cottage has a lot of warmth to it, a lot of character, a lot of hominess to it. And I think it is a really inviting style. I love to see images of these. I love to see pictures, you know, renting out a little cottage or something something like that. I would consider that. I think that would be fun. It's not a style I personally would live with. You know, I like things that are a little bit more glamorous, a little more polished, or just a little bit more modern than that, but I do think it's a really cool style and I like the take on it. This is where you're gonna see those shaker cabinets. This is where you're gonna see wood paneling and some great features like beadboard. I love all of that, but with a modern styling or take on how all of these features are used. I think Modern Cottage is great. I love this. and also also, this is a style where you see a lot of vintage. And you know, I love vintage. I think it's such a sustainable way to shop and to buy things for your home. And I think that's really wonderful. Plus, there's so many vintage 
sellers out there and you can support small businesses that way. Wonderful, amazing, fantastic. I love Modern Cottage. I think it's definitely timeless and here to stay. I think it's just becoming so much more popular in 2023 and people are realizing how great of a style this really is. Something I personally have learned in 2023 is that not everything luxury looks good. So be sure you check out this video right here all about some luxury home ideas and features that don't look very good. We can leave them in the past. We can forget about them. Be sure you check out that video and I will see you over there.